This is Thomas believe in the run. This is Robbie with believe in the run. Oh, and we're hitting spoiler the spoiler alert. Shoot. We're hitting the dirt today. Dirt bag in it. Joe, Rob, Joe Rob. Dirt, Dirt, Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have Robbie run us through the trail shoes. Robbie, man, you love trail shoes. I do love trail shoes. I kind of like trail shoes just for regular everyday wear. I I think that your whole vibe though is sort of campy. Not, not campy like not, Batman not, and Robin from like the 70s Rocky or 60s. <laughs> yeah, more of a campy like your favorite brands that we get are like Cotopaxi and you know, the, the stuff that I imagine someone with an Outback Subaru would like. Hmm, I do have a Subaru Outback. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> One time I lost my uh, Subaru Outback key on a trail run and I posted it to like the Facebook group. Subaru lovers? And I was, no, it was like of the park. Oh. And I was like, I know this is going to come as a shock to y'all but I lost a Subaru key. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like, of course it did. Yeah. So yeah, we're here. We're ready to do this uh, trail roundup, which we kind of didn't have much time to do. So we're finally getting to this point, but we're here. Best I mean, trail shoes it's not like we haven't been busy. We've been putting out best ofs. Yeah. And I mean, this and that, it. you know, look through our video feed. Anyway, so uh, if you want to know how we broke this down, a lot of this, we actually handed off to our core trail team, which is, Matt Kacharski, Taylor Bodine, out in Colorado. Let's, yeah, let's give some ge uh, geography here. Mm -hmm. Matt is in the technical trails on the East Coast. Yep. Taylor's Colorado, so those mountain trails. He pretty much runs everything. He lives in the Rocky Mountains, yeah. so that's like he, his outdoor. He's, so he has been mistaken for like a Yeti yeah. and that stuff. I get it. And then we've had Alex. Uh, yeah. Alex is in. She's I in Minnesota. Wanna, I, I, was, I always want to say Idaho for some reason. Yeah. So yeah, so we hand it to them. You get feedback. Robbie's our main editor on the website. Also sees a lot of the shoes to our reviewers. So he knows because he has to get their reviews back. He hears what they have to say. Plus Robbie dabbles in the woods. I think I've run in every one of the shoes that we're going to show you. So at least I have experience in all of them. So. Yeah. Since we started out talking about comfort and how much we like wearing some trail shoes as an everyday kick around shoe, let's talk about the most comfortable trail shoe. Now I did have this one as well. My color wasn't as cool as your color. Yeah, I, I thought this was the best, one of the best colorways they came out with originally. They have a lot of good ones now as well. But the Nike Pegasus Trail 3. Now we didn't give the shoe a great review. Why not Robbie? Because of this guy. Of all things, what makes a trail shoe versus you a road shoe? You need some good grip to get you through those wet rocks, muddy spots, roots, everything else. And we just had consistently bad time with Nike trail grip. But all I have to say, it still wins an award for best comfort shoe. And I do think that this shoe, if you're on those buffed out trails in like California on the West Coast, where it's like almost like a fire road, it's a dirt road, the shoe would be phenomenal. The cushioning is better than the road shoe Pegasus. It's full react midsole. And honestly, this is not just one of a comfortable trail shoe. This is one of the most comfortable shoes I own overall. So if you're just looking for comfort and want the trail look, that'd be your shoe. All right, next up, best grip. So we just went from one with crappy grip yeah. to the best grip. Now this is a company out of Finland called VJ Shoes. Uh, not a great name, but great shoes. Now they make, They've done some stuff like Obstacle Racing World before, and things like that. OCR. Which makes sense, yeah, for the cool kids. Yeah. But they have, they claim best grip on the planet, and I might have to agree with that. I mean, in the past we've given it to like Innovate with their uh, graphene mm -hmm. rubber. What makes this better than that? I don't know, so what they use is something called a butyl rubber, and I don't know exactly, but it's like, you can see, I mean, if you feel this, you can see it's pretty flexible, like mm -hmm. just crazy sticky and tacky. And I was grips. actually Taylor, our trail reviewer, said it's almost too grippy. And I will say, when I took this out on the trails, I remember going to this one creek, and you know how sometimes you hit a rock and you're like vertical and expect to slip? It just like hung on there. I was <laughs> like, like Spider Man. I was like, wow, I did not expect that. Mm. Uh, now, I will say, if you're looking for a cushion, that is not something that's in the shoe. You feel every damn thing on the trail in this. Yeah, that looks pretty thin. Eight ounces, though, super light. All right, so next up, this kind of has a couple awards for us. So one of them is best under the radar shoe. Talk about Norda. I really like this shoe. I was actually a little surprised because it doesn't on paper have everything that I would normally say, hey, that makes for a great shoe. Looks a little clunky. It is a little heavy. 
But when you get out on the trails, I felt like this one was pretty comfortable. We both enjoyed the Dyneema upper, which pretty much makes the upper indestructible, although it does keep it a little bit warm. This isn't wearing out anytime soon, like you said, for, especially for a winter shoe, not bad. Uh, it has this Vibram leg base outsole and a Vibram midsole, which is something we've never seen before. Or if we've seen it, we didn't know we were seeing it. <laughs> right, exactly. But what's crazy is that it's a really, comfortable, capable trail shoe. The only um, area that I didn't like when I went on my trail running it was the way the heel counter worked. There's not much padding cushioning. So you get a little rub, rub there and you don't get quite the lockdown that sometimes you need on uneven terrain. Overall, I really like the shoe. I like the way it looks. It is a little warmer. I think I would even use it like if you're on that slushy, like crummy road days yeah. where you need a little extra traction. Well, I could throw it out speaking there. Speaking of, we didn't have this award on our written review, but I'm throwing it out there because we all agree best road to trail shoe yeah. right here. Matt Kacharski, our, our trail reviewer, he's been running this from, he lives a couple miles from the trail, takes it out, loves it. So another, again, great road, great trail shoe. And I'm thinking with that warmer Dyneema upper, it'll be a decent shoe for the winter. Sure. All right, Robbie, so not everybody has the budget to do expensive road shoes with the race shoes and then get on the trail and drop another bunch of, you know, coins out there for that. What do you got for budget? All right, budget shoe. This is really a surprise for, I think, everyone. This is the Asics Fuji Light 2. This is, it comes in at $120, by the way. And it's like a no-nonsense trail shoe. Taylor got it, and I've even seen some other reviewers give this a great reviews as well. He loved, like, flight foam midsole. That's the same midsole as the Joe Nimbus Light, mm -hmm. like flight foam midsole. Uh, three millimeter lugs with, like... They're pretty aggressive. Yeah, but with the Asics grip, really nice stuff and fairly lightweight as well. It's just a really surprising shoe. That that one was a surprise when I saw the guys get it and just the feedback they were giving. This shoe seemed to be a pleaser for everybody who tried it and at a 120 price point, that's not an easy feat. At UTMB, the dude who finished like fifth or sixth ran this shoe, so. There you go. I can handle that. We both got to go out to Colorado and try this next shoe. If you want something that's gonna be a little easier on the legs, a little easier on the body, those long miles, and you like wearing shorts past your knees, what shoe would you use? Solomon Ultra Glide. Who helped develop the shoe? Uh, well, Courtney DeWalter had a lot of input yeah. into and this. and Max King. Yep, and they know a thing or two about trail running. It was surprising because Solomon isn't particularly known for their Max cushion shoes. Solomon goes with that European feel of fast terrain, heavy duty grip, maybe not the most comfortable shoes. So they really didn't have anything for the American market where you really wanted that softer shoe for longer miles, maybe a different type of terrain. And then you get this guy. You get a lot of comfort in the upper, pretty breathable mesh here, contra grip outsole, decent stack cushion. And all in all, it just gives you a lot of comfort for lots of miles. Of the trail shoes that we got this year, this might've been one of my favorites price i think it's 140 so not too bad there. there's another one i feel like you can go road to trail yeah you could definitely take it that way for sure because the lugs aren't aren't super deep i think they're like three it's millimeters super well. aggressive um so yeah love this shoe good job solomon robbie you want to go light you want to go fast you want to like really blaze a trail what are you going with adidas Terex speed ultra now this is actually one of my personal favorites maybe favorite trail shoe of last year I don't know, I love the way this shoe feels. It's just nimble and light. Yeah, like, basically. Continental rubber outsole, fairly grippy, not too aggressive, just a really speedy shoe. Lightweight, breathable mesh upper, and the tongue is nice and lightweight. Cinches down, just feels like you have almost like a soccer shoe on your so foot. So what did you like about running in this shoe? I don't know, but exactly what you said, it just feels nimble, it feels quick, It's it, the grip is good enough. I just, it just really feels like a Just nice, work? Yeah especially for a faster shoe. Now, honorable mention for the best lightweight shoe would be the Hoka Zanal, which again- You did the steps in Colorado, and didn't you? I did, we did the incline and then ran down bar trail with this guy. So the, uh, the Zanal is another lightweight shoe. This is the lightest Hoka trail shoe that's out there. And we'd be showing yours, which had dirt on them, except for didn't someone break into your Subaru and yeah, take well, it? Yeah, <laughs> technically I left the doors unlocked and then somebody just took all my shoes out of the car. And yeah, so I only got to do a few runs in them, but I really enjoyed it. Again, Vibra Mega Grip outsole on the 
parts that have the outsole. Another good like maybe road to trail option. So just, you do feel the trail on these. So uh, there's not, there is cushion, but not a ton of protection. On there. Now the Tecton X is coming out right now. Is it mm -hmm. basically this shoe with a plate? Yeah, very similar, similar in the same family type of shoe, uh, different, cushioning though the tecton uses the nitro mm -hmm. yeah so just a spoiler i think uh tectonics next year might be showing up on this list for sure all right so one of the most interesting shoes to hit the trail market this year was from dave and kevin at speedland and they they came out with a shoe where they said if we could make the perfect trail shoe without any compromises regardless of price what would it look like and what do we have the speedland slpdx Keynote there, regardless of price. Obviously, this is probably gonna fall outside the range for some people, but we're it's not- the most expensive shoe on our list. It is. So while it might not be in the uh, best value, value of the Asics Fuji Light, depending on what your income is, it could be a great value. Yeah. <laughs> Performance alone, this is what we're going off of. The fit of the upper was uncomparable to any other shoe that I tried this year, whether it was trail, road, whatever, it just, fits amazing. I agree. This is probably the best fitting upper I've ever worn. A lot of other trail reviewers have said the same thing. Then the reason for that is it has these BOA LI2 dials. Dual. This fit system is different from past BOA fit systems in that it goes in both directions. So you can loosen and tighten Sorry. on the fly. Uh, one of the things our trail reviewers loved about this is that if you're going on a downhill, you can really cinch it down. And then when you want to loosen it up on other sections, you can do that in just a in quick like a second, second, just grip down. Yeah, and uh, has Dyneema up here, has Dyneema stitching, Michelin rubber outsole. For those of you who don't know what Dyneema is, we brought it up before on the Nordic shoe. It's stronger than steel, right? Yeah, uh, at the molecular level, it is like 15 times stronger than steel. It's not going to rip. Exactly. It's not going to go anywhere. Lots of durability there. Yeah. And the other thing that's interesting is the way that it has a P-Bax insole. It does. That you're going to pull out. It's I not really it's... insole, it's like a sandwiched midsole, but because the shoe has this bucket style of rubber around the side, they're able to load the inside with two layers, one of them being this P-Bax. Yeah, and this, so this has a removable carbon plate, which we've showed in our other review. Carbotex. And it's Carbotex. So Bends it's... one way, so if you step on a rock, mm -hmm. it'll bend with you. But if you're trying to go off and sprint, you yep. get the power. And I will say the carbon plate for me wasn't uh, like the biggest deal. Like a lot, I actually took it out for, cause I did use it on the road, which is kind of insane. <laughs> um, it is pretty firm on the road, just like going from road to trail. And I do like the cushion of the P-backs. A lot of people think it's really one of the more comfortable shoes they've worn. So, but you know, you have the option to take the plate in or out. Almost poked me in the <laughs> eye with Carbotex. Come on, this is my chance. I know, it's taking me out. So inside, underneath that layer, scary man, um, is another layer of standard EVA cushioning underneath. This is our trail reviewers pick for best technical trail shoe and best race day shoe. Basically um, the best trail shoe. Yeah, basically. We didn't get to review some other shoes out there like the Solomon S-Lab Pulsar, which, you know, we've heard some great things about. So Solomon, hook us up, yo. Anyways, we can move on. Solomon, hook us up, yo. Yeah, Solomon, <laughs> hook us up, yo. All right, another shoe with the BOA system. Uh, right, so this would be our honorable mention for the best technical trail shoe. Um, again, this is our favorite technical trail shoe, the La Sportiva Cyclone. One dial. One one boa dial. and But I really like the way that this has its sock, like three quarter high um, collar. I love shoes with that. I, I, ever since the Nike Lunar Epic, yeah. I kind of wish they would come back with like that high top feel. I like it. And this has the uh, La Sportiva friction outsole. And that's insane. Like that's gotta be, what is that? Like a 10 millimeter lug? Yeah. I mean, that's I gotta be like it's six, deep. seven. It's at definitely months. six. For sure, yeah. I can't remember. And but it's super. I creepy. think these are five millimeter. Uh, these are no, these are six uncut. Okay. But I've worn them down a little bit, so. Yeah, because that looks super aggressive. I'm pretty sure it's six, but I can't remember. Anyways, yeah. all that to say, it is super aggressive. You can take this over any kind of terrain, and it's going to handle it. How's the cushioning? Uh, the cushioning's not 
bad. It's definitely firmer than you're gonna get with some pee bags right here. It's a little bit on the heavy side. There's obviously a lot going on here. And, but overall, yeah, I like the wrap here so the debris doesn't get in. The boa, even though it is one dial, and you're not gonna get that same fit because you just don't have that, that lockdown yeah. like right here. Um, still very solid. I hope we see boa more in trail and road in the future. So if we had to give a best shoe, it probably would be the Speedland. Obviously, you know, 375 is a lot, but there. The but that's why we have a best budget shoe and exactly. you can look at the other shoes at max cushion if you want something softer, we've got that in there for you. So there's a lot of choices right now for trail runners for you to pick out what you want out of your trail shoes. That said, we do have some other trail videos up that are previews of next year. We have the Hoka Trail 2022. The Sock Solomon. Solomon. Saucony. is coming out with some crazy yeah, stuff. Yeah, especially after last year's mishaps. Yeah, the Endorphin Trail from last year was... Where is it? Do we, yeah, do we throw it out yet? Yeah, you've got it. There it is. Here it is. I mean, this, this is... Soccer. Worst, was this worst trail shoe of the this year? This is the worst trail shoe of last worst year. Worst trail shoe of last but year. But they're coming out with the, mainly because they Redemption. had to do a factory recall on it. Yeah, the thing was, the soles were falling off. Yeah. But next year, they're coming out with the Endorphin Edge. We do have a preview of that over on the uh, owner channel. That shoe is going to have a Carpetex plate. Uh, P-Bax cushion is going to be ridiculous. So. Yeah, their stuff look good for this upcoming year. Anyways, we're excited. So stick around. We'll have plenty more shoe reviews, trail reviews coming for you. And until then, uh, and if anybody finds Robbie Subaru keys, please let us know. Yeah, Patapsco State Park. Uh, you just if they're there. He's had to walk to work every day since then. Yeah. It's, his kids, his poor kids, are yeah. riding to, in a wagon to school. They are. It's a covered wagon. It's no all less. right. One horse. They're, they might get this in Terry. <laughs> all right. That's it. Peace, Peace out. And it has plenty of reflective elements on it, just it in case you do. Mine take are it. all messed up because I tried to. I put my, I put these in a bucket of uh, OxyClean for a day to try to get them white again. <laughs> and I messed up the. Why did you try stuff. to get them white again? Because they're such a pretty. Oh, you wanted the white. All right. Yeah.